The moon is about 240,000 miles from the Earth. Telescopes enable us to see distant objects as though much closer than they really are. By means of the 100-inch telescope of Mount Wilson, we see features on the moon's surface as though only 100 miles away. With the 200-inch Hale telescope of Palomar, the visual distance is reduced to 25 miles. Through these telescopes, we'll take a sightseeing trip to the moon to view its interesting features at close range. To the naked eye, the moon revealed few of its secrets. As we observe it in this manner, we see large dark areas surrounded by bright regions. The light and dark areas form a pattern that some call the man in the moon. Others have different names for the figure according to individual fancy. Galileo made the first telescope. It was two inches in diameter and had a magnifying power of about 30. Observing the moon through this telescope in the year 1609, he called the dark areas seas, thinking that they were bodies of water like our oceans on the earth. The 40-inch Yerkes telescope, largest lens telescope in the world, gives a much clearer view of the moon. And by its use, we see that the dark areas are rolling planes. There's no air or water on the moon. The gibbous phase and half-moon phases occur during the 29 and a half day period from full moon to full moon. This large dome at Mount Wilson Observatory houses one of the largest telescopes in the world, the 100-inch reflector, mirror-type telescope. Through this telescope, the moon's surface appears to be only 100 miles away. It's a very large instrument and weighs more than 100 tons. Astronomers focusing the telescope for our sightseeing trip to the moon. Just imagine that you're looking through that eyepiece now at the moon. Let us imagine we're flying over the moon in a spaceship about a thousand miles above the surface. The very large plane below us is Mare Imbrium, 700 miles across. Over to the left, great mountain range, the lunar Apennines. To the right, just past the center, is the ring mountain Copernicus. Continuing southward, the surface appears very rough, particularly in the region toward the South Pole. In this region, there are hundreds of ring mountains called the craters of the moon. The astronomical telescope inverts the image, so we're approaching the south polar region. Looking at the South Polar region at full moon, we see a fine display of bright streaks extending from the crater Tycho. These are the rays. One of them is 1,400 miles in length. Rills or clefts are cracks in the moon's surface. Over at the right are three large cracks. By the side of the small crater, we see a number of cracks, perhaps made when this ring mountain blew up through the surface. Here's a crack 60 miles in length. Cliffs are several miles across and of unknown depth. The straight wall casts a black shadow when the sun is shining from the left. Here the sun strikes it from the opposite direction, lighting the face of the cliff, which is 65 miles long and 500 feet in height. The 100-inch telescope gives us this close-up view of the straight wall. Over to the right, a 75-mile gash cut through the high peaks of the lunar Alps forms the Alpine Valley. We get an interesting view of the features as we again move a Mare Imbrium. Sharp peaks rise out of the broad floor to a height of seven or 8,000 feet. Sunlight is just striking the tip of the central peak of Aristillus. In the upper left, the lunar Apennines again appear.
see a closer up view of these with the 100 inch telescope. There are more than 3,000 separate peaks in this great mountain range, one of them rising 19,000 feet above the floor of the plain. Moving over Mare Serenitatis, we see a winding pressure ridge thrown up by surface movements, very much as the hills and mountains were thrown up to form the Earth's geological structure. We find evidence of different periods of activity on the moon as we observe ancient crater rings on Mare Nubium, now almost covered by the ash fall or flow material of later times. Two theories as to the origin of the features on the moon are the volcanic theory and the impact theory. To illustrate the impact theory, we compare this great walled basin on the moon with Meteor Crater near Winslow, Arizona, where a meteor appears to have struck the Earth and exploded centuries ago. This flash pit is only four-fifths of a mile in diameter and a little over 500 feet in depth. It's very tiny when compared with the basins on the moon, which are 80 miles in diameter and 15,000 feet in depth, but there does seem to be a slight similarity in appearance. To some, this confirms the impact theory. Flying 100 miles above the surface again, we observe Ptolemaeus, over 90 miles in diameter. It's filled almost to the rim with flow material, but underneath or through it, you can see the dim outlines of ancient craters. Alphonsus, the second of the chain to the south, is about half filled. The third of this chain, Arzachel, appears to have no central filling. The dark streak near the base of the wall at the left is a cleft or crack in the crater floor. The Yerkes telescope gives us a splendid view of the twin peaks of the crater Theophilus as they cast shadows to the base of the western wall. The roughest and most varied region of the visible surface of the moon lies southward from the Theophilus region. Here there are thousands of craters, craterlets and pits, lapping and interlocking from the rim of the moon to the very center of its disk. Tycho is coming into view in the upper right with the great walled plains above it to the south. Below us, we see a very rough region with the great ring mountain Tycho in the center. A closer view shows the terraced inner walls. And with the 100-inch telescope of Mount Wilson, we look into this 54-mile crater bowl as though from a platform 100 miles above the rim rocks, getting an idea of these magnificent craters on the moon. The great walled plains are vast basins lying below the surrounding surface level. The largest of these is Clavius, 142 miles in diameter, its floor more than 16,000 feet below the rim rocks. Looking into this wide basin with the 100-inch telescope, we see many small craters across its floor, some only a quarter of a mile in diameter. Now looking through the 200-inch telescope of Palomar Observatory, we see a rather smooth floor. Two crater rings cut the walls of the Great Basin itself. These are 25 or 30 miles in diameter. This is a very spectacular view through the 200-inch telescope showing one of these great basins on the moon. The region around Copernicus appears to be covered with light-colored volcanic ash extending for 100 miles, various, various directions. Through the Mount Wilson telescope, we see seven small elevations on its broad floor. Copernicus is 56 miles across and about 12,000 feet in depth. 
Then looking through the 200-inch Hale telescope of Palomar, we get a thrilling view as we look directly into Copernicus Crater Bowl. The elevations are small mountains rising to a height of two or 3,000 feet. The moon might be termed a cinder world, lifeless, silent, and without air or water. 